from Spain to Siberia, the world is experiencing record-shattering heat. India suffered its hottest march in more than 100 years. The heart of England, today hotter than the Caribbean and Western Sahara. Hot made history again today. And as the mercury rises, so too does the death toll. Hospital admissions rising, a deadly sign of what's to come. The body can't cool down anymore at all. The heat wave turning deadly now. It starts to cook from the inside out. But what turns a hot day into a heat wave? And how is that process being affected by climate change? What counts as a heat wave depends on where you are in the world. Heat wave is really not a very well-defined term. When you have a temperature that's a bit over, a good bit over what's normal for that time of year for a persistent period of time, someone somewhere will be defining that as a heat wave. In the UK, a heat wave can be declared after three days of more than between 25 and 28 degrees, depending on the region. In New York, it needs to be at least three days of 32 degrees or above. While on the Indian Plains, a heat wave can be declared when temperatures are above 40 degrees and are 4.5 degrees higher than typical for two days. Heat waves are a normal part of the weather system, but how do they form? One factor at the heart of many heat waves is high pressure. The atmosphere is a sea of air. And if there's a particularly large amount of air piled up over a particular place, then the air pressure goes up and it becomes high pressure. Areas of high pressure are known as anticyclones. Large, slowly rotating masses of air blowing in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere. As air moves away from the high pressure center at ground level, air from above moves down to take its place. The air sinking down is actually heating up because it's being compressed, the same way that a bicycle pump gets hot when you pump it. And that's not only making the place hotter, it's also stopping the processes by which that place would normally cool itself down, which would be by having nice convective air rising and clouds forming. In mid-latitude places, such as the UK and America, the polar front jet stream determines where high pressure will occur. It's a core of very strong winds blowing from west to east, 8 to 11 kilometers above the Earth's surface. People who take aircraft across the Atlantic will know that it's often a good bit quicker if you're coming from America to Europe than if you're fighting the jet stream going the other way. The jet stream doesn't move in a straight line, but meanders around the world. Areas of low pressure sit in the troughs, and areas of high pressure form in the ridges. When the twists and turns of the jet stream are particularly amplified, these lows and highs become slow moving. When a high ends up getting stuck in one place, it's known as a block. These can persist for weeks or even months. When you've got one of these blocking systems working, the rest of the weather basically try, has to either stop or work its way around it. Um, and that means you get this sort of like eye of stability uh, where, the, where the block happens. That's where you get the really nasty heat waves. The heat can become self-perpetuating. When the sun comes down on a summer's day, quite a lot of its energy is spent on evaporating water in soil moisture or through plants. As heat goes on day after day, you start running out of soil moisture. And that heat, which used to go into this latent heat of evaporating water, just sticks there and heats things up. This process is amplified when the sinking air of the anticyclone traps the heat in like the lid of a pot, creating what's sometimes known as a heat dome. It becomes this sort of like weight of oppression that, that, that can't shift itself, that can't be undermined. This process unfolded in the 2021 heat wave in the Pacific Northwest of America and Canada. Vancouver, a city baking yet again tonight in a record-smashing heat wave, one that's being called not just historic, but 
dangerous. The heat wave exceeded national maximum temperatures day after day after day, setting a new record of 49.6 degrees Celsius. A village called Lytton eventually actually caught fire. The heat wave of the left scientists basically gobsmacked. They really hadn't anticipated that anything like that would come about. Heat waves broke records in every continent in 2022, but it's when countries are unprepared that temperatures can be deadly. Between 2000 and 2019, South Asia saw over 110,000 heat-related excess deaths a year. And in America, heat is responsible for more deaths than tornadoes, hurricanes, or floods. Heat waves don't have the drama of many other big weather events. However, they do kill a lot of people, and that's why they're sometimes called the hidden killers or the unseen killers. In some climates, like India, heat and humidity can be a lethal combination. Humans, like landscapes, cool down through evaporation. We sweat, and the sweat evaporates, and that takes away heat. If the humidity in the air is high, then that's a less efficient way of cooling yourself down. So the higher the humidity in a given temperature, the hotter you will actually feel. A so-called wet bulb temperature measures heat stress, providing an indication of the danger to human life. It's measured by wrapping an old-school mercury thermometer in a damp cloth. If you have a wet bulb temperature above about 35 degrees Celsius, that's to say above body temperature, the body can't cool down anymore at all, and it starts to cook from the inside out. Even young, healthy people will die after about six hours in this heat and humidity. Wet bulb temperatures are on the rise. Many countries have already hit a wet bulb temperature of 31 degrees. And a few weather stations in South Asia, the Persian Gulf, and the southwest coast of North America have recorded wet bulb temperatures close to or above 35 degrees Celsius for short periods. Hello, I'm Elliot. I work with Economist Films. If you'd like to read more of our coverage of extreme weather, why not take out a subscription to The Economist? You'll receive daily and weekly analysis of global affairs. You can read us online, in the app, or listen to the audio edition. For the best offer, click the link. Spiking temperatures can be unbearable, but aren't always the direct cause of fatalities. All around the world, excessive heat will make it harder for people to breathe, and it will put stress on their circulatory systems. This is particularly bad for people who are old or people who have underlying conditions. And it's not always hot days that are the deadliest. So-called tropical nights, where the temperature doesn't drop below 20 degrees Celsius, are on the rise in many countries. It's not entirely clear why this is associated with mortality, but it is. Something about the very disturbed sleep that people get during such events does seem to make it more likely that some of them will die. Cold water, bananas, oranges. Incredibly, even simple adaptations can save lives. But being prepared is everything. Most places where there has been an unexpected, lethal, horrible heat wave, afterwards work out what they should have done and try to put into place policies, habits that would make things better next time. The trick is to learn the lessons before you get the heat wave. Something France realized when a heat wave in 2003 killed 14,000. One of the reasons why it was particularly lethal was that France just hadn't seen itself as the sort of place that has heat waves like that. There were a lot of lessons learned in France, both personally and institutionally. One of them was that you need to check in on people if you have any worries about them. Another is that you need to find a way to bring people, especially elderly people, people in poor housing, to places which were cooled down, school gyms for example. That turns out to be something that works very well. Unless they adapt now, 
countries yet to experience the most extreme heat are going to be particularly susceptible. The sort of areas that people worry about where heat waves have historically not been seen that much but where they could do an awful lot of damage is Afghanistan, other parts of Central Asia and parts of Central America as well. Adaptation will be ever more important as climate change continues to increase atmospheric temperatures. Often the role of climate change in extreme weather is a bit subtle, a bit this, a bit that. If you make the planet hotter, you are going to make the heat waves hotter. And a relatively new area of science is key to understanding the impact. The idea of weather attribution is to work out how much more likely a given event that's just been seen is because of the global warming compared to how likely it would have been without that global warming. A pioneering attribution study focused on the 2003 heat waves in Europe, responsible for 70,000 deaths. The researchers involved concluded that heat waves like the 2003 heat wave were now roughly twice as likely as they had been in the pre-climate change world. Evidence has piled up since. In Siberia in 2020, temperatures reached 38 degrees Celsius, the highest ever recorded north of the Arctic Circle. Researchers say climate change made this heat wave 600 times more likely. You're basically saying that this is weather that you would never see without climate change. The mechanism is simple. Greenhouse gas emissions have pushed up average atmospheric temperatures by at least one degree Celsius from pre-industrial levels. A small shift in the average makes the really unlikely high temperatures at the extreme tail much more likely. If the atmosphere continues to warm, you will see heat waves worse than you've seen historically, and you will see them over larger areas. There are predictions that under some warming scenarios, fairly extreme ones, you could see wet bulb temperatures that make areas basically unlivable becoming quite common in a few parts of the world. But scientists don't yet understand how climate change will affect the atmospheric circulation patterns that cause heat waves. The question of whether the odd things that cause domes of high pressure to persist over particular places, whether those will become more or less likely. Some models say yes, yeah, some say no. They contradict each other. Whatever the answer, humankind needs to act now. Even after greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere are stabilised, and with them one hopes the climate, there'll still be a lot more heat waves because the average temperature of the planet will be higher. Governments need to do more to protect their populations, not just national governments, but also city governments, local governments. At the same time, people need to understand the risks so that they can protect themselves and, crucially, each other. I'm Oliver Morton. I'm a senior editor at The Economist. For more of our coverage of extreme weather and climate change, please click on the link. And also, if you want more of this, please subscribe unless you do so already, in which case, many thanks.